As I say, the night that Hitler becomes chancellor, January 30th, 1933, there's a torchlight parade through Berlin. A lot of the SA, the brown shirts, are leading this parade. Other people are joining in. Um, the next day, on the 31st of January, Erich Ludendorff, of course, who had colluded with Hitler in the Beer Hall Putsch and subsequently, Erich Ludendorff writes a letter to Hindenburg. Now, Ludendorff and Hindenburg, of course, had worked very, worked very closely together during World War I. They described their relationship as a happy marriage. But they had grown apart in the years after the war. Each one had kind of taken credit for the victory at Tannenberg, and there was a lot of political differences. They hadn't had much contact. So Erich Ludendorff writes a letter to Hindenburg the day after Hitler's appointed chancellor, and he writes, quote, I solemnly prophesy that this accursed man, Hitler, will cast our Reich into the abyss and bring our nation to inconceivable misery. Future generations will damn you in your grave for what you have done. He's not far off the mark, is he? <laughs> Be February 1st. So two nights later, on February 1st, he gives a radio address to the German people. February 1st, he gives a radio address to the German people. He says that for the last 14 years, what he called the November parties, the November parties had been ruining them. Now, frequently, Hitler will reference the November parties or the November criminals. What he means when he references the November criminals is the people that signed the armistice in November of 1918. So, from Hitler's perspective, the same people that signed the armistice in 1918, they've been driving the country into the ground ever since. He stated, quote, Within four years, the German peasant must be rescued from impoverishment. Within four years, unemployment must be fully overcome. At the same time, this will lay the groundwork for the recovery of the rest of the economy. He doesn't offer any specifics. He doesn't offer any real concrete plan uh, for how he is going to accomplish these things. Um, he just kind of implies or states things are going to get better. I'm in charge. Things are going to turn around here. Now, this was the first time many Germans actually heard Hitler speak, uh, really speak. They had, many Germans hadn't attended his conferences, didn't like him, but many tune in to hear him speak because he is now the head of uh, the government. And many hope maybe this guy will fulfill his promises. Maybe this guy will get the country working again. Maybe we should listen to him. Maybe he is offering something here. Now, the same day, or no, I guess it would have been a couple days later here, early February, uh, he persuades Hindenburg, he says, we need to dissolve the Reichstag and once again hold elections. Now, the Nazis believe, the Nazis believe they can hold an election on, uh, uh, at the beginning of March, so they, for about a, in a month's time. The Nazis believe they can hold an election in a month's time that will, uh, where they expect, of course, once again, to get even more, pow more seats in the Reichstag. The trick is, this time, they're in power. They're the ones in charge of the elections. So, yeah, they're going to do pretty well in this election. As we will see, this will be kind of a semi-legal election as it happens. Um, so the election is scheduled for March 5th. March 5th, 1933. Now, the transformation that takes place in Germany in the coming weeks and months is astounding. Now, I should point out uh, here, uh, this is Hitler, this is Franz von Papen here, uh, his vice chancellor. Von Papen takes the vice chancellorship. Now, Hitler only has two Nazis in this government. And the Nazis are here, Wilhelm Frick, who will be the Minister of the Interior, and Hermann Goering, who will be Minister Without Portfolio. Okay? He'll hold the cabinet post without any specific brief. Goering is also because um, the Nazis have the most power in the state of Prussia, which is, of course, Berlin. He is also the Minister President of uh, Berlin, or of uh, Prussia. So he's kind of like the, the top guy in the state government of Prussia, as well as holding a kind of a federal cabinet post here. Okay?